we've been working in our lab on the design of boron subthalcyanine. It's an organic colorant. We, we're using it for organic electronics, mainly to make solar panels out of. Um, we started with, uh, we've been working on these materials for a few years now, getting to know the chemistry. Uh, one of the things that's always eluded chemistry in this field has been accessing new chemical bonds, which you can add on to the structure and the complexity, or even the simplicity, if you can put it either way, but add on to the structure and design elements. Because one a huge aspect in organic electronics is to be able to design a material for a function, to be able to tune its properties. Um, and so what we were working with is really trying to enhance our ability to tune those properties. I'd been uh, working with a variety of different chemistry in the field and I, I kind of had a, a hunch one day that maybe this chemistry was progressing and I had some, some, some analytics to prove that. And so I went ahead and did a full-fledged investigation on these materials. And uh, after a while I came to them with some results and I was able to actually show them the, the structure of the material and prove indefinitely that I made these new types of materials which combine boron subthalcyanine with uh, chemically available thalamides to make a new, uh, new state of matter. The thalamides have been shown to move both positive and negative charges and that's key in the functioning of organic electronic material is that we do need to move both charges in opposite directions and these thalamides in fact move both. So that's um, unique. Um, it's so unique that um, they're so-called bipolar molecules or molecules that can move both charge are called bipolar and these are quite rare um, in themselves in the field of organic electronics. Organics have the ability to be manufactured. Not only are the materials themselves inherently cheap, but you can manufacture them in a very inexpensive way. So uh, one of the, the biggest drawback of, of uh, solar panels currently is their expense. And so this is probably the best way to reduce its, its cost. And that's why there's a lot of, uh, why we're really interested in exploring this opportunity. One can expect if you bought a silicon-based cell for yourself that you may pay that back in the 30-year time frame without government incentive. Uh, organic cells, we've done calculations here at the university that show that payback period could be as little as six years without government incentives. And so um, their real advantage is strictly in cost. Uh, secondly, their lightweight and potential flexibility. So organic cells, some people call them plastic solar cells, can resemble overhead transparencies that were quite common up, up to a decade ago. And so they can be flexible, lightweight, portable, um, easily installed onto structures without the need for structural reinforcement, for example. And so people need to know that these could be a companion to silicon cells. I don't uh, currently, organic cells are in the realm of the spin-out company. And those spin-out companies, there's four of them worldwide, one in Australia, one in Germany, and two in the United States. Each of those uh, spin-out companies are closely linked to the laboratory, the university laboratory from which they came. And each has a unique composition of matter that they're attempting to exploit, to scale up, to mass produce and make uh, organic solar cells. At the University of Toronto, I'm one of a group of researchers actually looking at emerging solar cell technologies. The University of Toronto has a team of four or five professors, each looking at their own particular um, spin on emerging solar cell technologies. And so we're one of a team, and that positions the university quite uh, uniquely to, to foster, to promote collaboration between them, between the research groups. We're also ideally positioned, I think, to, to form the first Canadian spin-out for uh, organic solar cell technology. From these compositions that we've come up with are good enough that with a motivated student like Graham, they're ready to go to that next level. As a professor and an educator, I'm particularly proud that you can give uh, to a student a very broad directive and that at the end of their PhD studies can come back with a well thought out, well executed and complete story that is the fundamentally new composition of matter that's been designed at the molecular level.